Aquaba returnees, this is Adrian S.E. Cook, and this is the returnees. And today we have a special guest, Mr. Richard Manti Amu, who is a Ga who was born and raised in the town of Adabraka, which is in Accra, greater region Accra. Today, he's gonna to share with us why he returned back home to Ghana. Richard, um, in 2018, President Akufu Addo invited those who were in the diaspora to return to Ghana to come and visit as tourists. In addition to that, he also asked them to come back and live and come and help develop Ghana. Also, in addition to the diasporans, quite a bit of Ghanaians have been returning back home also. In the past few years, some of them had said they didn't want to return back to Ghana, but it seems they have changed their mind, come back, build some homes, and are ready to retire back to Ghana, and also to come back and start businesses and to invest. Not only them, but also their children and their grandchildren are coming back to live. Uh, returnees Channel would like to help these returnees come back to Ghana. And we do this in the way of showing videos, several videos a week on real estate, how to buy homes, how to build homes, or actually where to buy land. We also show where to go shopping for food and clothes, medical information, uh, business opportunities. We talk about food and culture, because those are very important. So there have been many stories of people returning. As you can see, if you go to YouTube, YouTube channels, you see a lot of people coming back. So what we want to do today is have you share your story with us and tell us why you came back and what your plans are. So could you please tell us why you returned to Ghana? Yeah, I returned to Ghana after after a while, going around the UK and the US, looking at situations there. I realized that I had to, you know, go back home and stay because uh, the UK and the US payments, the road payments, are not paid with gold. So people assume when you go to the UK or the US, you are going to make all the money you wanted to make, but it is not so. You need to go through a process, immigration process, and then uh, before you will be legitimate resident or immigrant in the UK or the US. Without that, you will just be struggling all over the place. Mm -hmm. but i realized you know back home is better than to go and struggle somewhere else you know so that is the main reason i came back home okay because uh, well it's easy back home mm -hmm. it's easy back home when you focus and you know you plan for a business what am i going to do and you know you go straight into that without looking back it's it, it should be all that rosy mm -hmm. for you okay did you have a hard time adjusting to being back home any culture not, at all. not at all i mm -hmm. didn't have a hard time and even if i uh, yes i did but then i knew i was going to go through setting hard times so I was prepared for that. Mm -hmm. I was really prepared for that mm -hmm. because uh, you, 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 it's like shifting gear. Mm -hmm. So I was already prepared for that. So I didn't feel it. I was just focused on what I want to do. And that's a good and word I to use if you shifting gears. And this is what a lot of returnees have to do when they come here. They have to shift gears. And that's sort of like a culture shock because they come and things are not like where they lived before, whether it was UK, US, Australia, whatever, they have to shift gears. Can you make any suggestions to that? How would they shift gears? Yeah, um, that is that is what I, if, if you know that an African 
you know, originally, I'm not talking about the African-American. The African-American or the Australian or any other national, you know, they are used to the American way of living. Australians are used to Australian, the British, you know, but somebody who is from Africa or Ghana and he's gone abroad, coming back home, he knows the situation. He knows the environment already. But somebody who was born and bred in the US or the UK, you have to make your mind that you are coming into a third world country. Mm -hmm. And that you don't have to expect all that you get over there in the US or the UK, you don't have to expect all those luxuries back here in Ghana. Well, how can returnees help Ghana develop? Because that's what the president asked returnees help to develop. How do we do that? Returnees, you help Ghana develop by come set up a business, get some people employed. Unless you set up a business, you have led 10, 20 people, depending on the size of the business. Mm -hmm. And that's another way of helping develop the country because you have absorbed 20 people and you are putting food on their table. By, that, by doing that, you will also be you know, multiplying your capital that you invested into that project. Mm-hmm. Now, how do so, Ghanaians, how can Ghanaians help develop Ghana coming back? What is it that the president is expecting from them? It's the same thing I'm talking about. Come mm-hmm. set up a business and then get some people. You know, when you set up a business, you build your business structures, you know, it's a development. Mm-hmm. It's another step towards industrialization. So when you set up a business, it's, you know, adding up to industrialization. Mm -hmm. And then you absorb about 20 people who are out of job, 20 people who are having got any job doing. So it's another development, you know, by reducing the unemployment rate in the country. So right. those are the things. Mm-hmm. So if let's say fifty people come, and these fifty people, uh, let's say they, they employ twenty people each, mm-hmm. just imagine how many people. Right. So what is what are your plans now that you're home? A lot of the returnees come over; they're retired already. The older generation that came over, so they have social security and they have pension plans. Young people are coming over, like I said, with skills and education, um, and they're coming over. Maybe they've been saving their money, and they come over, and then they run out of money. Sometimes they have to turn around and come back home, wherever they were from, and work to get more money. Uh, what's your plans for the rest of your future there? You see, that's what I'm talking about. You come down, you have your money, maybe you have $100,000, $200,000, and then uh, you don't have a plan. You have that money, you don't have a plan. You come down here with the money before you think of, you You know, you just talk to people, friends. So what am I going to do? What am I, I have to go into a business. What kind of business? Everybody tells you, okay, go into this business, go into that business. And because you are not prepared for that business, those businesses, mm-hmm. you're not going to survive because right. you, you're not prepared, you're not focused before you came down. You have to come down, get one particular business, you know, whoever you're going to pair with in Ghana, the person has to brief you and you understand what kind of business you are going into and what are the dividends what you're going to get in terms of profit you know with that when you go in there you know what you are doing so you're going to be focused and you hit and hit it like a ton of bricks mm-hmm. well, so tell that, me, that's a, that's a, uh, since you've been home 
over time. What are the differences that you see in Ghana since you returned home? What have you noticed as difference? Do you see development? What 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 things did you see? Are you seeing? Yeah, uh, talking about development, you know, the infrastructure, governmental infrastructure from way back. All the presidents who have come up to date do, you know, one infrastructure or another. They all have legacies. They have infrastructures put in place, mm -hmm. trying to make the country, you know, bring up to the standard. Right. Uh, talking about um, what an a retainee, as a retainee, you have to focus on what you are coming to do. Don't involve in politics. Mm -hmm. Don't involve in politics whatsoever. Mm -hmm. You have to concentrate on your business. And trust me, doing business in Ghana here, you do the right business. Doing the right business, you know, you're not going to regret. Mm -hmm. You will never, never going to regret it. Well, what are some of the business that you recommend for returnees and including Ghanaian returnees? What kind of business? Businesses in Ghana right now. There are all kind of businesses, all businesses that you know about. They are all over here, but that's what I mean. I came down, I have done my research mm -hmm. and let's say, I, I, I know a couple of businesses that uh, I can venture into if I have the cash. You see, and if you have the cash and you want to go into that business, as I said, don't go into politics. Don't let any politician lure you into joining my party because you have opened up this business. Oh, the government, we are going to help you improve your business so they're gonna lure you into the, don't do it okay you well, some of the, yeah some of the businesses that you know i've heard about are poultry business uh cattle business farming you know technology you know those are some of the businesses that they're recommending for returnees you know to help the country develop and like you say hiring 20 or more people just hiring another person can help them and their family you know and if we all came back and helped that way it would be tremendous you know so the process of you returning back home would you consider that it's been easy for you or has it been difficult for you that's what i said earlier on it's gonna be a, a little bit i can say it's a little bit hard it was a little bit hard right but i didn't feel it because I knew it. I was expecting it. Right. So Plus I knew you have it. your family. You have family here to help you. you yeah. Know, returnees. Uh, yeah. Returnees from, the, say, UK, US, whatever. You know, they don't really have family. They had may come with money, but sometimes they run out of money. And you would love to say you don't want to come back and start working and go back, you know. But many people have had to do that. Yeah. You know. It's true what you're saying. At least I know about one or two African Americans who are stranded in Accra here. Mm -hmm. They came with a lot of money and then they, they associated with the wrong people. Mm -hmm. And then the, their monies, you know, they were defrauded of their monies. Right. Because they didn't associate themselves with the right people. And then they go into the right businesses. So your money is going to burn out. Right. But do your research. If you, it's always good if you want to come into business, come once or twice, at least twice, you know, to look at the things on the ground physically for yourselves, not by correspondence as I'm, I'm doing with you now. 
you have to get the person do the correspondence with the person and then come down when you come down the person you sit down with the person and they will tell you look this is where this is where you're going to start business if you want to this is you know the person will have to take you through all this and by so even where you're going to register and all this and they take you through and then you know by so doing you are still understanding the one you are dealing with you'll be studying the one you are dealing with somebody can take you through all these things but he can be a scam mm -hmm. so you need to study the one you are dealing with if that person sounds genuine or the person is a genuine person you can know you can see from that and that could be difficult also because there's some very convincing people out here especially you know when there's no money you know um, and you are looking to come back and you want to return home to Africa, you don't expect it to be scammed, you know? So, and a lot of people have been scammed with the land thing. That land thing needs to be straightened out. You know, several people have bought one piece of land. Those kind of things are, you know, need to be more uh, uh, government uh, involved and in, 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 uh, documented so that you know you're not buying somebody else's land you know who's the original person you can see how many times the land may have been sold you know those are the things that need to be straightened out you know that's true yeah that's true in terms of land it's happening all over the place mm -hmm. it's happening all over the place but uh that is that is uh when you come down and you want land at already developed area mm -hmm. that is where you get a problem when you say you look at this environment oh this place is well developed i need a land here to buy mm -hmm. you may get somebody scamming you right but you know you know development is shifting it's moving so just go outside the developed area and get a land there mm -hmm. the development is going to catch up with you there right so you go to the least developed area starts developing there and development is going to catch up with you there mm -hmm. and you're going to be the king there but you mm -hmm. don't you don't go to where it's already prepared right and you want to go enjoy the fruits there that's where you're going to get scammed okay you might get you might get land there genuinely but it's it's already it's always dangerous mm -hmm. it's always dangerous i'm not saying you cannot get a land in the developed area you can get it but if you get it and it's genuine it's very very expensive i mean very very expensive compared to when you go outside the developed area and trust me the, the amount you're going to use in buying a plot of land in a developed area you can go to the least developed area and you can buy maybe uh, five acres of land mm -hmm. with that same money okay. you can buy five acres of land with the same money when you move maybe 10 12 miles away all right, well, we'll have to do another show on how to buy land and how to buy property. We get a reputable real estate person in and have these discussions to help people, you know, the proper way to purchase land. Okay. That's right. Okay. Yes. And I think that's important. Um, you know, we still have people coming over and they want to buy land. Some want to buy houses, uh, you know, some just want to rent. Um, so we need to help them do these things. So Richard, oh. we want to thank you for sharing your experience and coming home. Um, and we appreciate you. Do you have any last words for the returnees? Yeah, my last words for the returnee is uh, I'm going to put my phone number across. Mm -hmm. Any returnee, any returnee who want to go into serious business, you know, in Ghana, I'm talking about business that 
if you put your money into to start that business it's like a you need a lot of money to start the business but you can get your money you can break even within a matter of few years in few years if you are serious with it you can break even mm-hmm. so you get my number let's talk if possible you come over i'll take you around where to study how to do it everything so that uh, you're gonna benefit and i also i'm gonna benefit for sure i'll be a partner even though i don't have the capital i'll be like a you know a, a small a small scale partner mm-hmm. and i will guide you trust me i will guide you get business this business online and you make your money get your money back within a few years trust me okay so thank you mr richard manti amu and we will post your number down there so people can have it so thank you very much for coming on board to returnees channel you're welcome madam you're welcome.